If you want to get an actuarial job, you absolutely do not need an actuarial internship in order to be successful. I've seen tons of people get a job just based on related experience that is not actuarial. I call these kind of jobs stepping stone positions and these are jobs that have a lot of the same qualities and skill set requirements as an actuarial career but they're not actually actuarial. So it's certainly possible to get an actuarial job without an actuarial internship. But if you can get an actuarial internship, it's going to help you in a lot of ways. One, give you a lot of experience that employers are going to value. Two, it'll really help you develop skills and expertise in the actuarial field. And three, it will help you discover if the actuarial career is really right for you. Hey future actuaries, that was an old clip, but this one is being recorded in August 2024. If you are a future actuary that wants an internship, who doesn't, right? Well, then you must watch every single second of this video because in it you're going to find tons of advice and insight from myself and other successful future actuaries about everything actuarial internship related. We're going to get into how to get an internship, then creating your best internship resume, how to succeed in internship interviews, and then at the end you'll get some examples of what myself and other successful actuarial interns have done so that you know what you might be working on in your internship. So let's keep the clips rolling. Three, two, one. Here's the mistake I made when I was looking for my first internship. I only told my parents that I was looking for an internship. No one else knew. Meanwhile, I had a family member that worked in insurance. I had a family friend that worked in accounting. And these were types of jobs that I wanted to get into, yet I was not telling anyone. I even knew a realtor, I worked for a realtor actually, that knew hundreds of other people in various different fields. I cannot believe that I kept it such a big secret that I was looking for a job, especially when I had all these people that knew me. They knew I had a good reputation. They knew I was a good worker. Like they would probably be willing to help me and support me in finding an internship if they were able to make those connections. In your network, you probably have quite a few people that are what I call connectors, and maybe that's a common term for it, I'm not 100% sure. But basically, connectors are people that love to connect you with other people. They just love making that connection because it makes them feel good, and they love that reward of being able to help someone else. So um, at my school, or like if you're at any university, joining as many like clubs as you can is a big plus because all these people are there to help you they're going through the same thing as you so that was the main thing I was so glad I joined this club um, the actuarial student association at my school mm -hmm. and really just like anybody who you know they had events every Friday with these companies who would talk about what their internship positions they had available for that summer and you could go and probably like all of them are on zoom now but in yeah. person it was it was very you know interactive you would meet people just through that organization who are willing to hire people okay. um, because you know of the school you go to and because you know you say you're gonna pass exams or you have passed exams, they're just already like interested in you. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was a big plus. Somebody who was in that club, who was basically in the same position as I am and passed two exams also, um, had a contact at the company that I'm gonna be working for. And they were like, they just posted on our group chat for the club, you know, anybody needs, me to send their resume over just like dm me and so i did and that i ended up working and i've had so many like that where i did send in nothing i never heard back mm -hmm. but that happened to you know work out the person called me and just like you know being comfortable on the phone too with the um you know hr person who called me i think also helped me actuarial internships can take place anytime throughout the year but the most common time is through the summer but actuarial employers usually start posting their internship opportunities really early on usually it's about five to seven months before the internship will actually start that means if you want an internship in the summer you're going to have to start applying for those internships in the fall of the previous year year i would say august i spent a lot of time on um fixing up my resume so that it would be like looked at because i think before i would apply and i just didn't really get the hitbacks that i wanted um because i wasn't i guess targeting what they were looking for okay. um, so i did spend a lot of hours just like 
could making sure my resume was perfect. That's but, one thing that we really focus on in the Actuary Accelerator community is just like making sure that like sometimes people have really good experience, but when you just put it on your resume without thinking of what actuarial employers are looking for, then it's hard for the employer to make that connection. So it's really important that you make the connection for them and show them how your past experience is relevant to the actuarial career. Now, I want you to get that objective statement off of your resume. Your resume is not about what you want out of a position. It is what employers are looking for that you can provide. They want to know if you have the skills, the expertise, the knowledge that they're looking for. They do not care if you are looking for an internship position in such and such a field. You want to replace your objective statement with a profile. Right at the top of your resume, you're going to put your profile up there and that profile is going to be a summary of what makes you an amazing candidate for the position that you are applying for. But ask them questions. Like when I was in the interview, I was like, how do you like working here? And then they would tell me, you know, I love it. And, I, and that's a good sign. Or mm -hmm. I would say, how do you feel that they the exam support was or why do you stay here or and they liked that and the last one in mass mutual they were impressed when i asked one question which was what is it on my resume that you feel that you would that i'm lacking and okay. they said they never heard that before and you know they're honest about it but they liked that i was even critiquing myself yeah, and that you can also address that. Actually, I asked a similar question when I interviewed too. It was, um, or are, are there any, um, I forget the exact wordings, but I can't think of it. But I was basically just asking if there's anything um, related to me and stuff like that that they saw as a potential problem or something yeah. that they're, that they are concerned about. That's a, the word, like any concerns that they have. And uh, I don't think they had I don't remember now or I don't think they said any because I don't remember them but um, I think that that was a good question to ask just to make sure that I could address any concerns that they had um, while you're there like you don't want them just sitting there thinking okay I have this problem and this problem and this problem with this particular person and you don't even get a chance to address them so that that type of a question is a really good idea if especially if you're okay with being kind of put on the spot and uh, being able to address those kind of things. So yeah, I really like those questions that you asked as well. And then I guess if we were to talk about the interview, which I think is, you know, what really secured me obviously was, uh, I guess the same thing, you know, displaying my personality because I do have great, you know, academic achievements in terms of, you know, passing my exams and having a great GPA at my school, um, but, you know, didn't have work experience. So I had to like, um, I guess tell stories like you you yeah. suggest tell stories mm -hmm. about anything I could which in my case was anything I did through my student uh, organizations or like volunteering okay so, awesome. uh, or like even my hobbies like I don't know if you can see my Rubik's cubes that's a big passion of mine okay. I yeah. love to solve puzzles so like being able to just because anytime anybody asks me about that I will get like into a flow and just yeah. get really passionate about it so like talking about that and how I will apply like that determination mm -hmm. uh to like the position really intrigued them as well so really um, just, just kind of like them getting to know you as a person and not yeah. just this person with all these qualifications but you as a person and what you like to do and those kinds of things helped a lot too create a model that um once it's developed it'll output like a probability that a, a given group that we're looking at is going to renew based on a bunch of factors that we've gotten from under from the underwriting department. Okay. So most of those factors are preset. Um, well, some of them are tied just inherently to what the group itself is doing. Um, but then we're, we're doing, um, or underwriting, I guess, is doing some things on their end where they're calculating some risk scores, for example, based on certain variables. Um, and certain information that has come through. So then using all of those things as predictors, and then plus we're manually inputting some rate increase, um, which is like, that describes how much the premium is gonna go up like in a given renewal. So like, for example, if you've got a $100 premium per month and a 5% rate increase would mean 
you're going to have a premium of $105 for your upcoming renewal year. So, um, and that, that can also be negative. We do do negative rate increases. So a and negative 5%. It depends 5%. a lot on the experience from the past year or so, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like a weight, a weighted thing um, where the rating system, we have like a, a computer rating system that's producing like, here's what I think the rate increase should be. But because of the credibility, we're, um, we're putting, um, depending on how many members there are, um, closer to 100 means more credible, right? So um, we'll kind of wait what the model is giving us versus what the experience we've seen to kind of set that final rate. I was updating like reserve templates. Like it was just, we had all these lines of business. Um, they taught me how to like put in the right uh, like months and uh, dates here and go through the Excel. And I just was, I did a ton of those. Like the first one took a while. I learned how to run a macro. Um, I, you know, asked various questions about like the lost triangles and yeah so you're learning a lot during that time right? yeah yeah but you have to get a feel with the company so like at that company it was like like how would they like you to ask questions I had to like ask it in that sense so I did that for a while for like four or five months and then I moved on to uh Aon so basically I, they're a middleman between the insurance and reinsurance company. Okay. We get clients, um, and from what I know and what I've worked on recently was we have two types. We have we evaluate the insurance company's exposure, so okay. the amount of losses that the insurance company has and the experience that they have, so like how credible it is their, I guess, um, history. Okay. So I've been working in on a on their on a, on doing an experience analysis. So with one a big insurance company with someone else on my team. So one thing that I noticed in um, re in uh, the brokerage is you need to communicate. Like communication is like key. Like sometimes you don't know really what you're doing, and it's okay to just reach out to my teammate and be like what does this number mean? Or mm -hmm. how do I put this in here? Uh, and they will tell you, everyone's busy, but they will tell you. So I work on that from nine to five. Um, and then they give me a side project um, working with kind of to work on a project with R to kind of automate this process to go faster. Okay. So you're kind of working on a team for some some of the day and then other parts of the day you're working on an individual project then. My next project was to work on an MVR. It was just called the MVR project. And for those of you that don't know, an MVR is a motor vehicle report. And these were really beneficial for insurance companies because they capture all of a policyholder's driving history. MVR gives all the details about policyholder's driving history. It will include things like accidents, prior claims, um, tickets, that sort of thing. And this gives the insurance company a really good understanding of all the driver's history. This is important for an insurance company because a policyholder may not always give the insurance company all the details or they might forget certain factors that the insurance company really needs to know in order to price their policy properly. So an MVR can be beneficial because it's capturing a whole bunch of information that either the policyholder forgets or chooses not to disclose, which is not legal by the way, but people do it anyway. So since the insurance company is able to order these MVRs, they have all the information they need about the driver in order to properly price their policy. However, MVRs do cost money to order, but also they may get valuable information from those MVRs that allow them to charge the policyholders more, increase rates. So for example, if uh, MVR showed that the policyholder had an accident that they never disclosed to the insurance company, then the insurance company may be able to increase their premiums because of that accident. So there's benefits, but there's also costs. My job as an actuarial intern was to determine if the benefits of these MVRs were actually outweighing the costs. So I had to determine if 
we were actually, as a result of ordering these MVRs, if we were actually charging more than the cost of the MVRs themselves. So it was a really interesting project. It involved me doing a lot of work with SAS and that's basically how I learned SAS. So it was a really good learning experience. I used a lot of Excel as well. If you wanna get an actuarial internship, then we have all the support you need to build up your network, get related experience, pass actuarial exams, get technical skills, and build up your resume so that it stands out to employers all in the Actuary Accelerator community. This is where you can get step-by-step -step guidance on how to become an incredible candidate for actuarial internships and also actuarial jobs down the road. So to check that out and possibly join, go to the link down below in the description. There's also a community of tons of other future actuaries that are trying to do the exact same thing as you, and some of them have already got actuarial internships, so they'd be happy to share their advice and insight with you as well. Go check it out.